Every single one of you guys watching this video right now knows the feeling. You walk in the barber shop, you ask for a couple of inches off your hair, and you walk out in tears. It's almost like barbers don't know how big an inch is. Now, if the barber messes you up, there's not much you can do about that. But what you can do is use ways to make your hair grow quicker, which is why I'm making this video right now. I'm going to give you guys eight ways to make your hair grow quicker using science, using research, using AI. I don't care how I get this info to you. I'm going to do it time to save your hair. There's no more waiting to be done. What you need to do is clean up your diet and eat nutritious foods. Now you might be wondering why what you eat affects your hair. It didn't make sense to me at first, but now it kind of does. Your hair follicles are among the most metabolically active in your body. What does that mean? It sounds like a bunch of big words. Essentially what it means is that eating good foods and providing nutrition will actually help your hair grow stronger and healthier. You want a balanced diet rich in vitamins A, C, D, E, and minerals like iron and zinc. Proteins and essential fatty acids provide the building blocks for your hair follicles to produce strong and healthy hair. Protein deficiencies can lead to weak and brittle hair. So the question is, what foods should you be eating to maximize your hair growth? So the first thing I recommend is foods like steak, chicken, eggs, or any sort of meat. The reason is because meat is rich in protein. Now, the reason that these proteins are so essential is because your hair is primarily made of keratin, which actually is a protein itself. Secondly, you want iron-rich foods, which includes things, like I said, like steak, spinach, lentils. What iron does is it actually helps red blood cells carry oxygen to other cells, which is essential for hair growth. There are many different ways to consume iron, but those foods I listed are just a couple of my favorites. Then we have vitamin C, which goes hand in hand with iron, helping with the absorption of the iron. For this, you can eat any citrus fruits like oranges, lemons. You can also eat things like strawberries, bell peppers, and broccoli. Next, you want omega-3 fatty acids, which can be found in fish. This can help reduce inflammation that causes hair loss. Now, because I don't want to bore you, just to list off a couple more things that you should be looking to eat is like vitamin A, vitamin E, zinc, biotin. Essentially, you just have to eat healthy foods because you're going to get all of this indirectly. If your parents taught you well, you would know that you just need to eat meat, fruit, vegetables, and things of that nature. Scalp massages and hair oils. Scalp massages can increase blood flow to the scalp, which helps with the speed at which your hair grows. Now, if you do scalp massages, I recommend doing it with dry hair. Don't do them in the shower. Whenever your hair gets wet, that's actually when it's in its weakest state. So it's not a good idea to massage your scalp because what it's going to do is essentially just rip your hair out. So I do recommend doing these massages dry and you're probably not going to see insane results, but it definitely does increase blood flow, which is proven to help with hair growth. Within step number two, I'm also going to include hair oils. There are many different oils that will help with your hair's growth, the speed and the thickness. Just to list a few, you can use things like castor oil, coconut oil, rosemary oil, and I'm sure there's a lot more out there like pumpkin seed oil. What I recommend instead of buying these all separately, you can probably just find a solution that has all of these mixed together. This is probably going to be the most natural way to help with hair growth. The downsides of using oil are pretty obvious, like the fact that it will make your hair look kind of greasy. So you can only really do this at night and the results aren't as insane as some of the other things I'm going to list later in this video. If you do want an all natural way to take care of your hair, I definitely recommend this regular trimming. You've probably heard in the past when people say when you cut your hair, it actually grows quicker. This is actually a myth. Now, the reason that I actually say this is because your split ends actually work their way down your hair. Split ends are essentially just when your hair breaks at the tip and it kind of causes unhealthy hair. So doing this isn't going to make your hair grow quicker, but it ensures that the hair that you do have is going to be healthy, which is very important for growing out your hair. Just make sure that whatever barber messed you up, you don't go back to them when you get these essential trims. I actually trim my hair myself. I do it pretty frequently and I just use some scissors. Now, I don't recommend this for everyone because you probably will mess it up, but if you have a barber that you trust, I definitely recommend this step. Now, with all this being said, please do not believe the myth that whenever you trim or cut your hair that it grows quicker because it's just complete cap. Same goes for shaving your face. It does not grow back quicker whenever you shave it. There's no scientific evidence for that to cut out using any sort of heat on your hair. Hair dryers, straighteners, curling irons, all of these things are horrible for your hair's health. It will lead to damage, breakage, and split ends like I mentioned previously. And if you use too much heat on your hair, it could get to the point where it's so damaged that it just completely breaks off and you basically lose all your progress of hair growth. This happens because it strips your hair of all of its natural oils and essentially just like cooks it. Like you're, you're literally cooked if you do this. I used to use a flattening iron on my hair every single day until I started getting perms and it was the worst decision of my life. I would wake up and my hair would be physically crunchy which was just disgusting feeling and actually like touching it it just I, it was not good oh and by the way this can also include taking showers that are too hot so definitely keep that to a minimal but that's not the worst thing because water can only get but so hot unless you're literally taking boiling hot showers which i don't think you are but maybe you are who knows if you're a real alpha you would be taking ice cold showers like me i don't do that but i kind of wish i did <sighs> 
using sulfate free shampoos and conditioners. I'm not just saying this because I sell shampoo and conditioner, shopcleancut.com by the way, but this is actually one of the reasons I avoid using sulfates and parabens in these products. Sulfates are similar to heat in the way that they strip your hair of all its natural oils, which is why sometimes after using shampoo, you'll feel your hair and it's just completely dried out or really fluffy. Sulfate free shampoo and conditioners leave your hair more like damp in a way, keeping those natural oils at a good level of like this balance. You don't want your hair to be completely dry because it's going to cause issues like breakage, damage, split ends, all the things that I mentioned previously. As for parabens, that's literally just bad for your health. So I'm just looking out for you guys. Minimizing stress. Now, this is hard to believe, and I think it's pretty crazy, but stress can actually slow down the rate at which your hair grows. What I'm reading right now says stress hormones can shock hair follicles into the telogen resting phase in which they no longer produce new hair strands. So if you've ever heard about like presidents going gray because they're so stressed or losing hair over stress, like that's not a fake thing. Like that's actually real. The question is, how do you minimize the stress that you do have? A couple ways to do this are by getting consistent exercise, getting eight to 10 hours of sleep and simply just breathing like you can do it right now just breathe in and out <sighs> you've ever tried that before that actually is proven to help with stress i might make an entire separate video on stress alone but it's actually caused by a hormone called cortisol the things i just mentioned will lower your cortisol essentially lowering your stress levels Stop touching your hair so much. When you touch your hair and pull on it a lot, it actually stresses your hair follicle, which is not what you want at all because your hair follicle is what actually allows your hair to grow in the first place. When I say touching your hair, this includes a lot of different things like even wearing hats. If you wear a hat and it pulls your hair back and stresses it all day, that could actually cause hair loss. Once again, this is bad. So wearing hats itself is not the issue. It's only if they're pulling your hair. And the same goes for physically touching it with your hands, especially like I mentioned previously, when your hair is wet. In the shower, you want to be the most gentle with your hair that you possibly can because you might pull it out and once again there are exceptions like if you're touching your hair but it's very light that's fine but if you feel tension on your scalp that's not what you want oh and just a bonus tip for you guys you lose a lot of hair when you go to sleep because your pillowcase just rips them out if you were to get something like a silk pillowcase it would completely negate that and you wouldn't even have to worry about it i highly recommend they're really comfortable and it helps with hair loss so it's a win-win most useful step that I've ever used. It is a solution called minoxidil. Minoxidil actually started out as a heart medication and I guess somebody just put it on their hair and realized it makes it grow quicker. The intended use is actually combating hair loss, but what I used it for was helping my hair grow quicker. Believe it or not, I actually had hair loss as well when I was younger and this completely prevented that. The minoxidil that I use is from a brand called Growplex. The reason I like Growplex specifically is because they can bind minoxidil with some other natural ingredients that prevent hair loss. Also, it comes in the form of a foam, a liquid version of this is a nightmare. It drips all over your face. When I've used liquid versions in the past, I literally grew hair in places that I didn't think was possible, like my forehead. So if you're dealing with hair loss or if you just want your hair to grow quicker, I highly recommend using this. Put a link in the description for you guys. With all this being said, I hope I saved some lives out there. I actually got a buzz cut when I was in middle school and I was doing all of these tips. So I thought I'd give back to the community and help you guys out. Now, none of this matters if you lose your hair to begin with. So I highly recommend watching this video right here where I teach you how to make sure that you never go bald.